Hello and welcome to a millinery hat making video. My name is Alona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I'm going to show you how to make Mrs Midge Maisel's yellow infinity hat from her visit to the Catskills. If you don't know what I'm talking about, here's another way of putting it. I'm going to demonstrate how to make a vintage 1950s style wireframe cocktail hat adorned with a pleated ribbon. Just remember, this is my preferred method, there is no right or wrong way, just whatever works for you. Let's gather the materials and get started. First, we need to make our wire frame on which the ribbon will sit. For this, you will need a poupe head, cling film, sharpies for drawing on the cling film, measuring tape, pliers, sewing things, mini clothes pegs and obviously some wire. I am using 1mm millinery wire which is wire that is covered in thread. The thread covering makes it easier to work with. If you can't find millinery wire, galvanised wire will also work. Cover your poupe head in cling film to protect it from pen marks. Draw your measurements onto the cling film. From the centre top of the head, measure and mark how far down you want your hat size to be. I am making mine sit 2cm above my ear tips. Divide this line into thirds. Following the curvature of the head, extend the lower third line by your desired hat width. I'm making my hat 10cm wide, so my line is extended 5cm either side of the centre. Draw your infinity loop using those construction lines. Measure the drawing and cut that same amount out of wire plus 5cm for an overlap. Measure your wire from the inside of the curve, this will make sure you have cut the right amount. You will notice that your wire is all wonky, you will need to flatten it out. This is a vital step, so don't skip it. If you don't flatten out your wire, it will hold its tension wrong, and if it has the wrong tension, it has the possibility of coming loose from your joining stitches and causing an injury. Let's take a pause here before we join the wire, because now is the perfect time to cover it in something functional and pretty. I have here a vintage 1950s velvet rouleau trim. This is the holy grail of all vintage millinery finds. It's a small tube of bias velvet with a string running through it. It is functional because of the nature of the velvet nap. Velvet will help secure any hats to the head acting a little bit like a soft velcro when it comes into contact with hair. I'm going to pass it over my wire shape and once the wire is all covered, cut it down to size and join the wire ends together. If you can't find any vintage velvet rouleau trim, don't worry, you can make one yourself. Or you can cover your wire in other things such as a sewn up Petersham ribbon. I've got a video on how to make these on my Patreon. Details of how to join are in the description box. Cover the wire with the rouleau loop. Stitch the ends of the velvet down to secure. Then start shaping the wire into the infinity loop. You will want the 5cm join to be at the back of one of the loops, but don't let it touch the centre join. Sew the centre join together and then sew the 5cm join together. Try to hide your stitches in the velvet. Before we get to pleating, we need to talk about the ribbons. This is a Petersham ribbon. It looks not quite the same as Grosgrain ribbon, even though they look very, very similar. The biggest and most important difference is that Petersham is made with natural fibres, whereas Grosgrain is polyester. The pleating will only work with a stiff, natural fibre Petersham ribbon. My ribbon is from Baxter Hart and Abraham. It's 30% viscose and 70% rayon. And as you will see, it holds a fold very well. Of course, you could pleat any kind of ribbon that will hold its shape. Velvet can work, but it does turn out a little bulky. As usual, I encourage you to experiment with the type and size of your ribbon to see what look you like best. 
Right, we've got our wireframe and our ribbon, it's time to pleat. There are several different methods of how to do this and I encourage you to try them all and see which one works for you. Once you've found the one, let me know what it is in the comments. I'd love to know. For the corkboard method, you'll need some corkboards. Mine are placemats from IKEA. I've also got some rulers to hand and a selection of various types of pins. Also, don't forget your sewing kit. I will be using a short length of ribbon to practice on. Start with the ribbon pointing away from you and fold it towards yourself. As I put in a fold, I am positioning it about 2mm to the right. Folding it back on itself, putting in a pin to hold it in place and starting again. At first, I tried to use a ruler to measure my pleats, but in the end I realised that it is less stressful to just count the ridges in the ribbon. I ended up starting an upward fold three ridges after the end of the previous one, and the fold forwards is then also three ridges away. Let me explain that a little better. Follow the point on this black pin to count the ridges. One, two, three, put in a fold. Count the ridges on the right. One, two, three, and carry on in the same manner until you reach the end of your ribbon. You can vary the amount you pleat by. In the pleating on the left, I am spacing the pleats by the three ridges. In the pleating on the right, I spaced the pleats by one ridge. I will show the different looks these spacings give later on in the video. Next, it needs stitching to hold the pleats in place. Before placing the stitches, I'm adding pins to the other side of my pleats to make sure everything is held down. In hindsight, I should have just placed those pins in that spot to begin with. I'm using contrasting thread here so that it shows up better on camera, but you should use a matching thread so that it is invisible. A small stitch gets put in the fold of the corner. That's the place it will be least visible. Make sure you catch all the layers of the pleats as you sew. After every three stitches, tie a knot in the thread for extra security. sample. I think that's turned out pretty well. Before we try the other pleating methods, I wanted to talk a little bit about these types of wireframe pleated ribbon hats. If you'd like to do your own research into this topic, a name to look up is Edward Mann. The Victoria and Albert Museum have two examples of Mann's hats in their collection, and they very helpfully have an online archive where you can have a look at them. The Hatworks Museum in Stockport also has an Edward Mann hat. I've put together a Pinterest board with all the types of hats like this that I found online. To see my Pinterest board, find the link in the description box. This time I'm going to hold my pleats together using pins. I've got several different types of pins to try. Firstly, entomology pins. These are really thin and delicate, and due to this I hypothesise that they will be the best at not leaving large holes in the Petersham ribbon. Then I've got some standard dressmaking pins. Lastly, I have some glass head pins. The advantage of these is that you can actually see them because of the brightly coloured glass on the tips. Unlike last time, I'm starting with the ribbons laying out towards me. I'm holding the work in my hands and I guess I'll just wing it and start pleating. I'm already not as impressed with this method as it is very fiddly and it becomes difficult to hold in place. Let's put in a pin. This is the plain dressmaking pin. Hmm. That was a little tough to put in and I'm not convinced that it won't leave a hole once I take it out. Let's try the glass head pin. Nope, that felt much the same. The entomology pin is the last hope. That was much more difficult to get in through the multiple layers of ribbon. I'm not even going to bother persevering with this one, it's really hard to keep the pleats even and neat. Let's move on. Time for a more modern method now. For this one I'll be using some mini clothes pegs, but I'm sure this can be done with normal clothes pegs or quilting clips and even pin curl duck clips. 
I am already experiencing similar problems to the pinning method, which is that accuracy is compromised. Although this is very fast. The pegs are easier to put on than the pins. I am still, however, not convinced by the lack of accuracy. Maybe with practice I could get this going well, but I think I've already made up my mind. I'm going back to the cork board. I've cut out the shape of half my hat and I'm going to try and place the pleats following it. Twenty minutes later and I've completed the first loop. Before removing the pins, I'm going to sew it together just like I did in my sample. While I'm sewing, please consider liking and subscribing. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. And once I've done that, it's time for the other loop. To sew the pleats onto the wire shape, I have pinned them on and I'm going to hide my stitches on the underside of the velvet. To hide the stitches on the top, I'm folding back each pleat and placing my tiny stitch in that flap. And here's the finished hat. I have added a couple of mini metal combs to help anchor it to the head. I think it has turned out pretty well. Have I managed to recreate Mrs. Maisel's Catskills hat? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you think. Time to see what else can be achieved with this pleating technique. I spent some time away from the camera experimenting with these pleating methods to see how far I can push it. And here's what I've come up with. You'll notice that this hat isn't just the straight pleated ribbon, but features these rather lovely curls called Nautilus. How did I make these? First off, I pleated a lot of ribbon. And I mean a lot. I think for this whole hat, I used 8.8 meters of Petersham. Just like for the Mrs. Maisel Infinity hat, I've sewn up the jagged edge and now I can go ahead and make the straight line into the Nautilus curl. Take your needle and thread and stitch through the corners on the other side of the ribbon. Then pull on the thread and shape the pleats into a spiral. Tie off the thread with a knot, and that's it. I think these curls look super cute, and just like with the straight line of pleats, you can get a different effect depending on your depth and number of pleats. Here are the differences. On the very left is a nautilus consisting of 25 pleats spaced 4 ridges apart. In the centre, this nautilus has 35 pleats spaced about 3 ridges apart. And this last curl on the right has 45 pleats spaced one ridge apart. I also figured that I could combine the straight pleats with a nautilus curl on the end. I wanted to create a swirl using this idea. To do this I made 80 pleats going in the same direction as usual, that is offset to the left. Then the remaining 40 pleats I offset to the right. I then stitched up the outer corners of the pleats as usual and gathered the inner corners so that I could pull the curls up to form a swirl. In addition to this double swirl, I made three extra nautilus curls and one extra single swirl. It's time to combine these pleats into a hat shape. I didn't really have any concrete idea with where I was going with this hat, so I've got Anne, my pooper head, to model on. I find this way of designing a hat very daunting. Usually I can see a design very clearly in my head, and I can either make it straight away or draw it so that I don't forget it. But this time around I had no idea what I was doing. I was hoping to be inspired by the shapes the ribbons wanted to create by themselves, and eventually I ended up with this. Now I just have to follow the same steps as with the yellow hat. First, 
the wireframe. To figure out the shape my wire should take, I placed a red ribbon on top of my design following the paths of the pleats that needed the most structural support. Using the red ribbon as a guide, I bent the wire into this rather odd shape. Notice that it's following a triangular path. As we all know from physics, a triangle is the strongest shape, so I figured it would be good for the structure of this hat. Before joining the wire ends, I covered the whole wire in a DIY velvet rouleau I made earlier. If you'd like to know how to make your own version, this part of the video is available to view through my Patreon. You can also cover the wire in a sewn Petersham ribbon. Once again, I go over this in my Patreon subscriber video. Next, I need to join the wire at all its points of contact. I'm stitching the velvet to the velvet and trying to keep my stitches as invisible as possible. I am almost done. All that's left to do is put the pleated ribbon onto the wired shape. Once I pinned it all in place, I stitched it down. I tried to place my stitches still in the corners of the pleats to make sure the thread was invisible on the right side. Alternatively, you can hide the longer stitches inside the centre of the pleats. I wasn't too worried about hiding my stitches on the underside of the hat, as there was always going to be stitching visible from the pleating anyway. I have noticed that in many vintage hats, milliners didn't seem too bothered about concealing their stitches on the underside of unlined hats, so that's my excuse for this one. And here it is, the finished hat. I think it's turned out rather well. This one felt like an awful lot of work. It took me a whole nine hours, and I don't know if I have the patience to make another one of these. And as promised earlier, here's what the infinity hat looks like with the tighter pleats. Let's bring in the more spaced out original pleats from earlier for a comparison. As you can see, the different pleat depths give a very different effect, even though it's technically the same hat. I think I prefer the tighter look of the infinity hat. It no longer looks quite like Mrs. Maisel's hat, but it's a hat made by me, for me, and therefore I like it. From a design and making perspective, the tighter pleats were easier to curve and place onto the wire frame. So I think I'll continue making this model with the tighter pleats. But what do you think? What types of pleats are your favourite? Let me know in the comments. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I like to give you options for variations. We've already spoken about velvet ribbon, which does work, but it's not my favourite. What I do really want to try is using a wider Petersham ribbon. Looking at some of the Edward Mann hats at the v and Museum, I think they are using a 35mm Petersham or possibly something wider. I might even want to try this with a 50mm Petersham ribbon, that would make some giant Nautilus curls. Apart from varying the size and material of the ribbon, you can experiment with the wire structure underneath. If you can't find a velvet rouleau and you don't want to make it yourself, you can just use a sewn Petersham ribbon. You could even hand sew the edges of a thin velvet ribbon, but I imagine that would take ages. Something else that comes to mind is covering the wire in a thin tubular crin, although I don't know if that would sit comfortably on the hair. If you try it, let me know how it goes in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. You can support my work through Patreon, where you'll find the missing part of this video on how to make your very own velvet rouleau. You can also leave me a tip on Ko-fi, and all the links are in the description box. For more millinery content, you can follow me on Instagram at Bialona Millinery. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.